Hello everybody, this is Pitch Skull Black here and welcome back to another live stream with Harry Williams Productions. Do you want to say hello? Hello everybody. In which today we're going to be taking a look at the fifth Third Doctor story and the starting story for the eighth season of Doctor Who, Terror of the Autons. Yes, yeah, so this is quite a, an important Doctor Who story in many ways as it needs uh, by a couple of firsts so we got the first introduction of uh, Joe Grant played by Katie Manning and um, the Masters played by uh, Roger Delgado and the Autons as well which is quite a lot of potential I would have said but didn't really yeah, it's a shame they haven't been yeah. used more often. I was hoping that they would come back in the recent series of the time of recording this video, which is series 12. Yeah. Um, but uh, I thought they were quite good in, in rows, but they, they did look, make them look a bit safe in terms of they were, they were a bit sort of stylized, I'd say. Yeah. But uh, I think I, I really like the, the daffodils thing they got going on here. Um, same here. Uh, to, to sort of give an overall uh, overview of the premise briefly. It's a fairly simple story, really. Yeah, Terror of the Autons is a fairly simple story. In a way, it almost, um, in a way, <laughs> reading the sort of summary of it on Wikipedia almost makes me think that it's like um, Logopolis, but with Autons in a way. Um, so basically, Mark, the master Roger Delgado takes or steals the remaining nesting control sphere from uh, Spearhead from space and hooks it up to this radio telegraph tower to signal the nestings. And they eventually arrive, and the Autons eventually arrive, and he ends up building Autons by taking over this plastic factory, pretty much. Is that a good enough way of summarising it, or is that really poor? No, that's a really, yeah, that's, that's a really decent way. It's, it's, it's very, it's one of those stories that you can just sort of have on in the background, but not saying Bad, but it's, 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 it's a great yeah. story, but it's one of those where you don't really have to concentrate. It's just an, an enjoyable bit of television just to stick on mm. when you're feeling a bit down or whatever. Um, it's not like, I don't know, Kiss of Henrik or those kind of stories where you kind of have to concentrate a bit. Yeah. But it's one of those where you can just sit back and relax and have a good time with it. It is, yeah. I would definitely agree with that, and um, I would also say that it is um, quite a dark story as well in um, many regards. I'm actually surprised that this is only a PG on the DVD, to be honest with you. Yeah, there are some quite um, disturbing moments. For example, uh, the, the doll in itself is very creepy, which... Um, I remember watching some of the special features and apparently the, the doll actually received a lot of complaints from parents because of the fact that it terrified the kids. So it, yeah, that, it, that it did its job. Yeah, that thing is creepy as hell and a um, very interesting uh, creation. Yeah, there's a lot of good ideas in this. It's, it's the, the first story which, well, the first story in season eight, mm -hmm. which on the whole is a a great season um probably not as good as season seven in my opinion but I, still i don't think i've seen much of seasons eight to be honest with you I'm not even oh, sure what's in it mind of evil um cause axos colony in space and the daemons i think i've only seen um, um axos which is all right and then the amazing daemons as well as terror now yeah the Mind of Evil is, is a, a good one. I recommend that. Um, but uh, no, I think uh, Chair of the Autons is a, is a really good opening for what is actually uh, pretty much the master season because he's in every single story in that season. Yep, kind of. I, I'd yeah. say he's probably my favourite iteration of the master, I'd say. Delgado yeah. is. Not just because he's the first or whatever, but I just think he's 
he just looks like the master. He just feels like the master. Hmm. Yeah, it's quite it's, a, it's quite hard to say whether he's my favorite master or not, as I do quite like Anthony Ainley's master uh, quite a bit. But then again, both are really, really good. Yeah, I mean, I even like uh, Derry Jacobin, and John Simmons. I like I like all of them really. With not really not um, Messi so much, but. I, he's okay. I mean, mm. he's he's. I always well, rest for the occasion. Very over the top camp performance, but um. Mm. But no, I think uh, Delgado gives a, a great uh, a great performance in this, and I think the just the general character of the master is very is a very interesting uh, villain. He's basically the the. The yin to the Doctor's yang, I'd say. Yeah, he is definitely a very um, good character in this story and is a, a wonderful character um, on the whole, really sort of holding nothing back in this story. He sort of comes into the fold here um, <coughs> with a bang, I would have said, of him taking over a plastics factory. And um, spoiler alert, at the very end of the story, he um, creates a plastic mask and gets somebody to dress up like him and um, to basically make it look like that he surrendered to the unit team and gets that person shot at the end of the story. Um, So, yeah, very um, kind of almost sadistic I would say character maybe not sadistic but he definitely doesn't hold anything back in this story I would have said uh Roger Delgado's the master one of the one of the elements I really like well one of the scenes that I really like in the story is when uh he basically forces uh I guess the form owner of the company or whatever or the yeah. senior bloke or whatever to sit in his uh, plastic chair, which eventually suffocates him. I think that's a really great scene. In episode two, yeah, that's amazing. Um, it's kind of obvious that the actor is just pulling the uh, the sofa, like the chair, on himself. Yeah. But one can imagine that it's actually killing him. <laughs> yeah, and um, the plastic chair, and as well as a couple of other things in this story. Um, kind of make me appreciate this story even more because within the first Auton story, uh, Spearhead from Space, it's very much just the plastic shop window dummies um, that the nesting consciousness is controlling. There's no real other, um, as good as a story Spearhead from Space is, there is no real sort of other display of what the nesting consciousness can do with plastic and that's what i really like about terror of the autons because it kind of develops and expands the nesting consciousness consciousness's powers um i to what it can do with plastic like um there's quite a uh scary scene um where the also gets strangled strangled by a telephone wire for example yeah, that is a that is a really good scene. I, I was when I was watching it, I couldn't quite work out how they managed to do that. Yeah, that is. Yeah, you're right. That's actually really convincing and well done. Thinking back on it and sort of picturing it in my head. Because it, it, there's there must have been some really like clever camera trickery and editing going on there. Cause... Awesome some very cleverly disguised wire or something like that. Yeah, sort of it's, it's wrapped very... Wrapped around Pertwee's neck. It's very convincing. It is, yeah. But the the uh, the facial reactions that uh, Pertwee gives are hilarious. I can't, they are. I can't, oh, oh, I can't hold back laughing at that. <laughs> yeah, his facial expressions during that particular scene are pretty... Um, but uh, no, I think it's there are some really unique sort of ways in which the Doctor gets trapped and everything, and yeah. um, just the, the Master's clever little distractions, I guess you can call them, mm. unexpected turns that inevitably, well, he does try to kill the Doctor, and uh, 
on multiple occasions and of course <laughs> mm. so it's quite entertaining i suppose yeah um but uh, another thing to mention in the story is that a uh, sort of charlie chaplin like time lord comes to warn him about the master oh yeah him that was um a bit of an odd scene because it makes it look like that time lords can float yeah he's basically stood in midair it's a very bizarre sort of yeah scene I, like, it's just so weird so weird I, but I guess it makes sense because of the time lords yeah i guess at this point you could kind of get away with it as this is the 55th doctor who story and i were only introduced in the 50th they were still very sort of mysterious um, element to the show, um, the Time Lords. Um, I think in the, the, yeah later on down in the show's history, the Time Lords, in terms of their mystique and mysteriousness, it kind of got shot on in a, in a way. <laughs> yeah, it, it. I can guess they can kind of get away with this scene because the Time Lords were recently introduced, but at the same time. I still find it to be a bit of a weird uh, scene that they could have executed probably a bit better, in my opinion. Yeah, it's li- it's just literally so out of the blue that it's just quite yeah. jarring. Mm. But um, I think the bloke who plays the Charlie Chaplin Time Lord, yeah, um, I forget his name, but uh, I thought he did quite, well, gave quite a good performance mm. in the in the brief time that he was on screen. Yeah. But, uh, no, they're, they're, um, one of the other things I really like about the story is the, um, the, uh, the scenes of the quarry, the, the chase scenes or the, the battles are really well. They are definitely. And it just provides some really quite entertaining, but like, some good excitement in the story. Yeah. Definitely um, set up really well, uh, those things, and um, really well shot and choreo using the correct terms that I would have said, um, in terms of like how the unit troops and what have you are spying on the um, the uh, van through these bushes on the um, tops of these cliffs and sort of watching the proceedings and stuff. Yeah, it is really good, and there, there's a good cliffhanger. I think it might be episode to cliffhanger when uh they're in the uh police car uh, yeah and they, they reveal that an auto is actually driving them towards yeah, their death their that, deaths basically that was brilliant that was a really good cliffhanger and um yeah the autons really do get to do a lot more in this story um as well well the autons get um quite a variety of things to do in this story um i would have said as well which is really good they get to dress up as policemen and um the um, daffodils just look look really creepy and in your face almost yeah and i I love all the scenes on the bus i think that's just that's just a quite an, a quite an iconic third doctor thing the, the the bread bus yeah that's really good and it's interesting how they get voices as well yeah it's quite which is quite bizarre to hear like an auton talk but i guess you could say that's the nesting consciousness re- reaching through probably yeah um and it's it's funny because you think uh, the master like, obviously wants to bring the nesting to earth, but mm-hmm. he thinks they're actually all big, like going to be on his side, and then he realises he's fucked up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, towards the end, which is quite satisfying to watch. Mm, it is. And he ultimately ultimately ends up being a coward because he he runs away pretty much. Yeah, he um runs away pretty much but um is uh stranded on earth which kind of uh sets up the rest of this uh season season eight as um his tardis weirdly enough is um disguised as a uh 
uh, circus showman's van slash caravan yeah. slash truck. Is it, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it a horse box? Is it or something? Yeah, it's a horse box. That's it. Um, so basically, he's so yeah, and um, his TARDIS is basically that, and the, the doc and stealing his um, dematerialization circuit uh, from it. Yeah, it's quite a clever little uh, twist. Mm. And I, I, I love how the doctor just finds it amusing that he's managed to steal his, um, what is it, a dematerialization circuit? That yeah, he de dematerialization circuit. And he's just, he's just laughing about it with Joe, about how he, he basically has trapped the master on Earth. Mm. <laughs> Quite amusing. Yeah. And it also and this story also on the topic of the master kind of sets up um a kind of cliche, I guess you would say, um, throughout the rest of this uh, season, um, that the master would do. In sort of every role slash profession that he adopts in the stories, he always has a name that ends with master. Like I can't remember what he was called in this story, but I think I, in this... I think he's called Colonel Masters. Yeah, yeah, I was in Sea Devils as well. I could have been wrong. Probably was, to be honest. Um, but I think the Master is such a great character. Um, what do you think of uh, Joe Grant uh, as this is her first story, pretty much? Like, what do you think of her as a character? I think she was. Um, I think. Um, Joe Grant is a really good companion on the whole and did a really good job with the f three seasons actually that she um, uh, got in the show and her first story here is really really good in my opinion and her character here is really really good um, gets a lot of interesting things to do in this um, story and um, there's even like one particular moment which I which I find quite disturbing actually uh, later on in this story, which is kind of why I find the um, PG rating a bit questionable. Um, one of the autumn daffodils basically, um, pardon the way I put this, uh, squirts plastic over her mouth and um, basically creates a plastic film nearly suffocating her. And I think that acts as one of the cliffhangers. Talking about, or was it episode? Yeah, three? That, um, I think it might be a, maybe towards the end of episode three. I don't know, but I think it was. Uh, there are some just like quite disturbing, dark moments in this. There is, yeah, and um, I think probably the most uh, disturbing one of them all is that the Autons um, adapt this really sort of creepy sort of um, in a way's mascot sort. Of uh, sort of doll um, persona and hand out these killer flowers to the public um, which is really disturbing if you think about it because the public just think it's a nice friendly charitable cause but it's actually something far darker and far more sinister yeah and it's quite clever how uh, the master's plot is basically to distribute them all around the world <laughs> Yeah, and, resu and resulting in killing the human race of these suffocating daffodils. Yeah. So there's a lot of it. It feels um, very like Russell T Davis in terms of the scale, I suppose. Yeah, it does feel very um, global in that sense with daffodils. Yeah, because obviously Russell T Davis likes to make episodes feel as well especially in terms of like the opening and the finales to fit, have a grand sense of scale and this this story does have quite a scale to it it does sort of, yeah in certain places mm. not on the whole but towards the end whatever the climax does I think um I don't think this story is as good as Spearhead. Oh. Spearhead is, will always be a 10 out of 10 classic. Yeah, Spearhead is just amazing. Fantastic. And, uh, I'd say 
my ranking of the Auton stories, even though there's only what three, yeah, is probably the same order as that as their uh, broadcast, I suppose. Yeah, so number three, Rose. Number two, Terra. And all, then number one, all, Spearhead. They're all like, pretty good stories, well, especially Spearhead. But um, it's just a shame they haven't really come back, which I thought. Yeah, maybe, I mean, they've had little cameos in like the Big Bang and whatever, mm-hmm. but not a f- not like a full on story, which is kind of sad. Yeah. Yeah, it is kind of sad as they are a really good um, concept. I would recommend listening to the uh, Unit Extinction box set, first one, as that features the Autons. Oh, nice. Might have to give that a go someday. Yeah, it is really good. It's probably one of my favourite releases because there's just a great cast in it and some great episodes mm. in it. Yeah, and with, so I recommend it to anyone who hasn't checked that out. Yeah, and with me getting back into uh, and sort of properly getting into Big Finish lately, though, I will look into yeah. with regards to release properly at some point on the channel. Unless, of course, you're one of these people who just rather stick to the TV series. <laughs> um, I don't think there's much point in doing that. Do you be sort of um, limited? missing out on so much and so many great possibilities of a of fantastic expansions to your favourite era. At least that's the one. Yeah, I think uh, Big Finish will probably have probably done a few Auton related stories. Can't really think of any from the top of my head apart from units. But yeah. um, I think uh, there is Doctor Adventure is it some Despians that has the Autons in it. Yeah, Sin Thespians is in it, and there's also the new series novel Autonomy, which oh, is yeah. actually a really good book, in my opinion. Yeah, I would like to read that one, because I think the Autons are a great creation, and probably quite a, a timeless one, really. I had, I had an idea earlier today when I was at work, and the, an idea for a story was one where they use the idea of plastic in the autons um, in a sort of a way that has like the themes of that can have an effect on climate change or whatever. Oh yeah, that would be interesting. But it, it probably would have been a lot better than Orphan 55 recently. Oh yeah. Oh. Which was horrendous. Which was the one episode of Doctor Who that tried to appeal to literally every sort of modern day stereotype there was. There was the old pensioners, there was that furry, there was like those hippies with green coloured hair that were probably in the LGBTQ community considering how like here's every stereotype ever um, kind of Oh, I saw a comment recently, and it, it someone described uh, as that uh, furry you just mentioned, basically a, a cat's reject. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's good. Um, but I mean, this is completely for another video for another day. But at least of- it was better than the fucking scorpion from Nikola Tesla's Terror Night. Oh, I'm have to disagree with you on that one. Yeah, but um, I think there are there are, there are other things they could do with the autons. There but is definitely. There's the danger of possibly rehashing what's been done before, mm. which isn't a bad thing, but it's just the way it, they execute it. Yeah, roses in a way. A little bit of a rehash of Spearhead from Space, I would have said, but then in some areas. But then again, I need to watch that episode again, Rose. I, I've uh, seen it described as a like a soft reboot, a bit like Star Wars: The Force Awakens, in terms of reintroducing everything, that kind of thing, set of characters. Mm, that's fair. Like soft reboot. I guess it is basically. Um, really, and it's the reason 
why the show is here today. <laughs> yeah, got got to thank it for many reasons. And um, if it wasn't for that episode, I might not even be here um, talking about Doctor Who with you when I've even met you. Yeah, it's it's uh, and in a way, um, Spared was the birth of a whole new era. Yeah. It was. It's spared from space is a real sort of um, foundation layer for Doctor Who. I would have said big sort of moment in the show's history. Yeah, it's um, because it was the first story to be introduced in color. It yep. was um, well, it, it's the first story to feature. The unit family, I suppose. Yeah. Um, first John, uh, first John Pertwee story. Unless you count, I don't know, was it the Web of Fear to be the first story of the unit family? But in all its mm -hmm. glory, I suppose. Spearhead yeah. was the first one to do that. Well, the invasion was, I think. But um, in terms of the... Well, yeah, the invasion kind of was the first unit story thinking about it, but Spearhead from Space really sort of took that unit format and developed it a lot. Yeah, it, it, because up to that point, um, there was a lot of uh, the same old sort of base under siege uh, Doctor Who story formula. That was happened a lot in the Troughton era, which oh, is, 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 is no means a bad thing. But the fact that they decided to make Doctor Exile on Earth, which meant that there's a lot of stories which are on location. I think it was a very good move to uh, give the show a bit of fresh air, literally. Mm. I mean, and, I think all of season seven, apart from Spearhead, is based under siege. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's all this, really. Possibly. Maybe with the um, exception of Ambassadors as well. I think uh, season eight mm -hmm. is is Colony in Space and season nine. I think it is actually. Not sure. I think more, but um, there was a lot of on like location filming in season eight for the mm -hmm. most part. Yeah. With people and the demons, flee, which I've actually been to that location and. Oh, nice. Which was it's a, it's great. I recommend recommend that a lot, especially if you like the story. Yeah, um, yeah Colony in uh, Space was in season eight. There's some, there's some really good location filming in this story as well. To have the Orsons, there is the circus and everything. And uh, oh yeah, what does Mark Campbell have to say about? It? <laughs> um, what Spearhead? Um, Orton. Yeah, to have the Orsons. <laughs> He usually sometimes has quite controversial opinions. This comes from a guy who gives um, Spearhead from Space, Mark Campbell, a 4 out of 10. The Autons barely feature in this tackier but more exciting remake of Spearhead from Space. The various plastic-related killings are gleefully innovative. Innovative. In or so inventive. He gives it a 4 out of 10. Um, he gives this, he gives Terror of the Autons an 8 out of 10, but he gives Spearhead a 4. Well, I think in his uh, later editions or uh, revisited books, I think, uh, after that one, um, apparently his opinions do seem to change now and then. They For like, in, one, in one of those books, he gave Ghost Light a 0, and then uh, I think the, in a later one, he gave it a higher mark. Hmm. Which is interesting. Yeah. Um, what does he say? What does he have to say about Rose? Or was it not going up to that point? It does up to this point. One second. There's that one. Ba -ba -ba. Bright, brash, and fast moving. This is a perfect start to the Doctor's 21st century revival. Echo's satisfying reduced to months of the weak status. Their presence comes across as a cynical mob. However, is less satisfying, reduced to months of the weak status. 
their presence comes across as a cynical marketing ploy. Nine out of ten. <laughs> for, some reason, for some reason, he still gives it a nine out of ten. Despite <laughs> in this edition, despite the autons being like the major fucking thing of the story. I like, like how he just describes it as a marketing ploy, which is which is kind of it's kind of true, but it's I mean it, it could have been any old monster, really. Yeah, in, in fairness though, the Autons were a really odd kind of choice um, for to bring Doctor Who, in my opinion. I mean, they were pretty iconic, but they're not up to like the heights of the Daleks, the Cybermen, or the Sea Devils. I don't know if it was maybe they Spice wanted boys. to because first episode it doesn't, it doesn't look cheap, but if it is on Earth, it, it can be. They can spend the money well, so maybe that, that was the approach. Because mm. obviously you've got End of the World, which is in the future, on a space station, so they probably spent a large amount of money on that. Yeah. I guess it's a good sort of modern-day showcase for new Doctor Who. In a way. It's, it's a perfect jumping-on point, for sure. Mm. Um, but, uh, no, I think uh, Spearhead is definitely the best out of the audience. No, I think uh, Spearhead is definitely the best out of the Orthon stories, in my opinion. I um, agree with that. But not quite a bit. Um, because I don't think there's really that, I'd say, apart from the fact that it's just a really nice little relaxing, yeah. easygoing story to watch, really. Yeah. Yeah, it is quite nice and easygoing. Um despite when it gets kind of disturbing and fucks up in areas. Um, yeah, yeah. But it is a really good story, and um, just a really good story all, all around. I don't think I've got much much gripes with it either. Like, No, it moves on at a, at a good pace, and it's only four parts, which I think helps. Um, it's, just, it's fairly well-structured, decent cliffhangers, good mm. performances. Yeah, uh, it's uh, like I do have a really big soft spot for it, but and it is one of my favorites. Not of all time, but it's just one that I really enjoy. Yeah. And do you say do you watch this story for the first time recently? I did. I watched this story um, for the very first time, like a couple of weeks ago, maybe a week or two ago, and just really enjoyed it. I think it's great. Um. Don't really have a lot wrong with it. It's just a nice, um, solid story. Yeah, it's quite interesting that they decided to go for a second Auton story for the opening of season eight. Mm. Uh, another Auton opener. Yeah, that's which I thought was quite in- interesting. At least, um, at least it wasn't as close together as um, the Abominable Snowman and the Web of Fear were. <laughs> Oh, God, yeah, they were literally moments after, really. Yeah, like, there was literally only 12 episodes dividing those two stories. I think um, for anyone who out there who happens to be watching this and is has just gone into classic Doctor Who, I think the autumn stories are, I'd say, pretty essential to get, really. Yeah. Especially if, if you're a third Doctor fan as well. And, um... They are nice and available and very handy in the Anakin Mania box set, which collects both of them together in one. And it's a it's a great box set to get as well if you're if you just started collecting classic Doctor Who as well. A great jumping on point. It features two really enjoyable stories as well. It is. It does, and uh, I think one of our favourite stories of all time. As well, spearhead. Yeah, spearhead. As you can, it's. Just, I don't think you'd be disappointed at all. They're just really said so. That was great, and it's just. I'd say pretty much essential, really. Mm. For for any classic beginner or Doctor Who fan or whatever. Mm. Features the master as well, so you can't really go wrong there. 
True. And there's a lot to uh, a lot to love in these two stories. There is definitely. There are two fantastic um, Doctor Who stories overall, and they do kind of connect with each other in quite a nice way with the master uh, stealing the energy unit from um, the leftover energy unit from Spearhead from space, which adds a nice sort of um, bridging continuity between the two stories. Yeah, it is. It is nicely connect things together. Um, I, I guess you could. Uh, what I'm trying to say is, you could put these two stories together and have like a massive sort of eight part. Uh, yeah, it's just about, yeah, it's just about it's an eight part autumn story. You really, could actually, yeah, that would actually probably make a good marathon actually. Yeah, if you had the time. Could, you call the story Manic Mania as a story mm. and just binge those two because you could literally put those next to each other and it would feel like one long mm. story. I would just call it what the target novelization called Spearhead from Space, the Ultron Invasion. Uh, that probably makes sense. Um, so, yeah, I can't have anything else to say about it, to be honest. Same here, to be honest. I I just think it's a solid. Uh, Easy watch all around. Um, Super great bit. I think it's great. Yeah, I'll probably give it an eight as well. It's uh, it's very, very solid, very, very entertaining, and just a likable story, I think. Yeah. I... And, and it could open it to season eight as well, or the master season. Mm. Speaking of which, I will say, if someone is doing a marathon of all the stories... When it comes to the master season, you probably want to take, a, take break. a breather. Yeah. At some maybe halfway through, because I can imagine you'll probably get a bit a bit repetitive. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> With the master uh, turning up, getting away again, turning up, getting away again. Yeah, it is a bit of a repetitive um, season that I would have said. With just with regards to that. I think you could easily have had a story without the master and just have him appear a couple of times in that season. Yeah. And I've got to say, this, this season, even though I haven't seen all of it, ends great and ends great as well because Terror is a fantastic opening and I think the Damons is fantastic. Yeah, the Damons is one that I need to rewatch because I. I think I did find it a little bit overrated, but I do need to rewatch that one. <clears throat> yeah, I find um, the Damons uh, fantastic, and is one of the um, DVDs I got signed by John Levine when I met him. Oh, I, I got John Levine to sign Infer Inferno, yeah, special edition. I, think. I got him to sign regular Inferno and Times Champion as well. Oh, nice. <laughs> um. So, yeah, I'd probably give Terra an eight as well. And I think that's, I think it's pretty much towards the end of the review, I'm guessing. Yeah, I would say this pretty much um, concludes um, this review on Terra of the Autons. I think overall, we are, this is going to make it sound like a court proceeding, we're unanimous in that this is a uh, uh, great story overall and a great opener for the eighth season of Doctor Who. Yeah, definitely. It's a very, a very, very good story and highly, highly recommended. Yeah. Um, as, as I've said, not, not a masterpiece or anything like that, but no. just a really fun story to watch. Yeah, and just proves that you can't really go wrong with the first five Pertwee stories at all. No. Yeah, the, like... The John Pertwee era is probably, in my opinion, one of the most consistent eras for a Doctor. Mm. In my opinion, I'd say. Yeah, looking at myself and what I have seen, I haven't hated a story from him. I found a couple to be a bit average and maybe a bit yeah, boring, yeah. but there none are that are thoroughly dislikable. Oh, three Doctors. Yeah, it's not the greatest story but a lot of the, there, there are a couple of forgettable ones here and there well, well it's only a couple mm. but cool. overall 
But cool. a lot of stories are pretty yeah. good, I'd say. Yeah. Um, Which is quite amazing. Bit controversial on my part here. Um, Claws of Axos, Sea Devils, and the Time Warrior, I all find to be a bit average and a bit boring, to be honest, but I'll probably need to rewatch it. Yeah, oh, I recommend rewatching it because it is, is it's a, a great historical, I mm. think. So I guess that's pretty much it, I suppose. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it as well. So, like for subscribe, I hope you guys enjoyed this discussion review live stream on the third Doctor, Doctor Who story, Terror of the Autons, with the wonderful Harry Williams Productions. Say goodbye if you really want to. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the live stream, and uh, I shall see you, hopefully, for another live stream. Yeah, it would be great, and um, maybe we could do a discussion on something maybe a big finish discussion or something that'll be interesting yeah that'll be good so yeah so like for comment subscribe hope you guys enjoyed this uh live stream with the wonderful harry williams productions thank you like for comment subscribe and goodbye end